think that countries like Canada and the European countries are going to turn us off. That's not so. We have seen other countries in the Eastern Caribbean, like St. Kitts, who have had this program since 1984, and they still have visa-free access to all of Europe under the Schengen Agreement and to Canada. And we believe that we can do no less. Now, the Construct Antigua and Barbuda initiative is another initiative. And I want to say that, again, this came from this government listening, that we had a round table and we brought together several persons to discuss the issues in 2010. And one of the, the ideas that came out of a long discussion, bringing together stakeholders from all over, was this Construct Antigua and Barbuda initiative getting together with the hardware stores, the banks, um, all the different service providers, making sure that they would participate. They've done it, and the Construct Antigua and Barbuda is one of the success stories of this administration. I can tell you, Madam Speaker, that at the beginning of 2012, the total value of applications for residential construction projects received by the ABIA, the Investment Authority, was 22 million. That was at the beginning of 2012. By mid-November 2012, the value of applications quadrupled to 82 million. 82 million by November. The Construct Antigua and Barbuda Initiative has afforded many Antiguans and Barbudans the opportunity to realize their dream of home ownership. For those who started on the path to attaining that goal but were not able to complete the building process, this initiative has made it possible for them to recommence construction. It's having the desired effect of stimulating construction activity and creating employment, as we've seen in terms of the growth rate for Antigua and Barbuda. And so this sector will grow in 2012 and is expected to grow even further in 2013. Additionally, credit for home construction and renovations increased by 9% between December 2011 and September 2012. So these are indicative signs when you are talking about construction and residential construction, you look at the banks to see whether or not credit has increased in that particular area. Credit has increased, Madam Speaker. Another notable indicator is the 5.2% increase in importation of construction material as of September 2012. The wheels are beginning to turn. We had a difficult period. We had a problem that I described at the time as a Category 5 hurricane. A lot of people didn't understand what we were saying, but I've gone through them so many times. The coincidence of those factors, unprecedented and unparalleled, we weathered it. And out of that, Madam Speaker, we adopted the right policies. And with those right policies, we have been able, Madam Speaker, to see the results. Who does they laugh at their own folly? <laughs> We're very pleased with the results of the Construct Antigua and Barbuda Initiative, Madam Speaker. We are seeing projects which exceed $100 million by the time this initiative concludes in February 2013. But we're hoping by 2013, again out of discussions we've held with the private sector, to expand this program, expand it beyond mere residential construction to include commercial construction. And in doing that, we're going to see the wheels move even faster and get even more traction, Madam Speaker. And then, who will laugh at the folly again, Madam Speaker? So, Madam Speaker, in addition to that, in addition to that, we have the two other um, projects that I think are also going to do quite well. There's the Construction Projects Limited um, project, which is being developed by Mr. Miles Contrington. It's a locally owned company. Hopes to construct um, a total of 73 homes, um, two and three bedroom homes. This project is estimated to cost 18 million and to employ as many as 100 people. We also recently had the groundbreaking for a project by Mr. Keith Joseph out in Jennings, where he'll be constructing 37 homes. Again, we'll see the wheels turning, Madam Speaker. We'll see the wheels turning. And then, we have the $200 million bow panel project 
which is going to begin in early 2013. The government has formed, again, very creative. When people talk about you have to be creative, this is creative. We formed a joint venture between an overseas investor with Chapa. They will recapitalize Chapa. They will get Chapa moving. They have already employed um, a general manager for this um, project. The general manager who will be looking about the financing, uh, Mr. Marlon Rollins. Uh, Mr. Ken Harris is overall responsible for the bow panel project, doing a great job. And Madam Speaker, once that factory, once that factory gets going, out at Crabs, they'll be manufacturing products for the housing sector, not only for Antigua and Barbuda, but also to export to South America. They'll be exporting to the Dominican Republic. And Madam Speaker, this will be another Another, um, another aspect of this resurgence that is taking place. I just want to touch about, Madam Speaker, the question of land distribution. We spoke about land distribution last year, and when we checked with the member for St. Mary's South, he confirmed that we've distributed some 135 plots of land between January and November of 2012. This land was distributed across Antigua. Belmont, Bendels, Casada Gardens, Jennings, Carlisle, Christian Hill, Fitch's Creek, Fort Road, Liberta, Freetown, Old Road, Patterson, Parham, Villa, Lion Hill, Piers, and Willie Keys. I also want to say, Madam Speaker, that we are about to begin allocating and distributing the homes at North Sound and at Follies, we are persons, mainly public servants, will have an opportunity to own their own homes. They're there. We're going to make sure, Madam Speaker, that we get them on the occupation. And then, Madam Speaker, we're talking about tourism development projects. Now, again, many persons are aware that in 2009, investment in tourism declined by 90%, tourism construction, worldwide. Not just Antigua, the whole Caribbean. And time and time again, we point to the fact. Go through the car length and breadth of the Caribbean. I know the member for St. Philip's North. He has some understanding of these matters. And he would know, <laughs> Madam Speaker, that in the Bahamas, in order to get something moving, they were able to attract um, investment from the Chinese in order to get a major um, hotel project going there. But go to Barbados and see what has happened there. Recently, we would know what has happened with regard to the demise and decline and fall of some major properties. But at that, I mean, these are not things that certainly we, we, we are not happy to see anything like that. But we recognize that we are all in the same boat. You look at in Anguilla. Recently, two major hotel projects in, in Anguilla went belly up. One went for $15 million US, whole project. Hotel, golf course, everything. That's the reality. You can't have unstable. Um, you can't have a situation where we, we, we are not stable and not secure and, and don't have the, the guiding hand of somebody like the Prime Minister who is making sure that we do not take reckless decisions in this very difficult and dangerous climate. This is a time when we must make sure, Madam Speaker, that we have our feet solidly planted on the ground. And so, what I'm saying, Madam Speaker, there are several projects which have stalled. But what we're doing, we're making sure that we score the length and breadth of, 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 this, of this earth to get the financing, to get those projects off the ground. And that's where the citizenship by investment will make a difference. Because many persons have already expressed an interest to participate in the citizenship by investment, whereby collectively, you might have 10 people who become citizens through their involvement in this citizenship by investment program. Once they're properly vetted, each of them will be put in funds to make sure that we can get some of these projects which are stalled on the way, creating jobs for our people, Madam Speaker. We recently, in spite of this very difficult climate, very difficult climate, you go to the islands, you're not getting investment easy. We were able to attract Mr. Gordon Bush Stewart, mm. just over a year ago. Yes. 
And I remember when he called and he said, you know, he's not ready because we had spoken about it. And the prime minister personally intervened, spoken to him about it. And he said, okay, he doesn't have the financing ready yet, but he'll soon have it. When he had it, I think it was February 2011, and I had a meeting with him and we discussed that project. And I asked him, have you consulted with the member for the area? He said, no, he hadn't. I said, how you and him get on? He said, fine. I said, okay, no problem. Got on the phone, spoke to him. Next morning, they had a meeting at Pineapple, breakfast meeting. Everything fine, no problem, smooth sailing. And then, out of the blue, like a bolt from hell. Out of the red. Out of the red. Total objection. Madam Speaker, I believe it is very important that we understand there's some things, as I spoke earlier, where you may take a partisan approach. There's some things where we have to take a national approach. Now, I'm not pointing figures because I'm prepared to accept that the culture of opposition in a lot of these islands, maybe in the past when things were easier, when the world was not as it is now. <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay. That's right. That's right. We'll, we'll debate all of that. We'll debate all of that. And the politics of do for do, Madam Speaker. If that is the mantra, the manifesto, and the approach, Madam Speaker, then the people of this country are doomed. Because the policy of do for do will say, when I was in office, you objected. So when you are in office, I will object. And then if you get back in office, I will object. And I will do everything to cut your tree down. But who, who will suffer when the tree falls? It is the ordinary people of Antigua and Barbuda. So if you want to pursue the politics of do for do, Madam Speaker, that is always an option. Do for do is always an option. Madam Speaker, a scorched earth policy is always an option. Where you decide, if you can't have it, nobody must have it. Mash it up. Madam Speaker, these cultural political norms, which may not have had the impact of the past, in today's world, a highly competitive global environment, when we pursue those types of policies, do for do and scorched earth, and I'm saying on both sides, I'm not speaking here party, I'm speaking country. It doesn't matter who does it. It does not matter who does it, because if the Labour Party were to get back in power, God forbid, what, I mean, it would, be, it would be irresponsible for any government, if a project is in the best interest of the country, for us to then object to that. And I can say, and the member for St. Mary's North can attest to that fact, and the, the member for St. Mount, St. John's Rural North can attend to that fact. East, East sorry. They had full ministries at the time. <laughs> They will attest to the fact that when the Sanders project was coming to Dickinson Bay, we participated in that program. The Prime Minister spoke, I spoke, the member for St. Mary's North spoke, the member for St. John's Rural East spoke, he even went in the back row. This is the point I'm making. It was for Antigua and Barbuda, and we were in opposition. That's what happened. And Madam Speaker, when we consider the difficulty that we have been going through, a project from a tried and tested investor, somebody who, if they say they're gonna do a project, they do it. 140 million US dollars was on our doorstep, ready to be invested. 400 jobs, carpenter, mason, plumber, landscaper, all the way down. Another 600 jobs once the project is finished. With the hotel. All of that, Madam Speaker, when they're saying that it is their patrimony, when they did Jolly Harbor, was that not our patrimony? Yes. When they did Jolly Harbor, was not that our patrimony? But we benefit from that, and we have to understand that. When we did Emerald Cove, was that not our patrimony that some people had a private interest in? Was that not Antigua and Barbuda's sacred patrimony? When we look at the same Long Bay, Madam Speaker, there's a hotel there, the Pineapple Beach Hotel. Not only that, you have two acres already fenced off non-productive use by somebody who claims the right to occupy two acres of beachfront land. On that two acres, we are saying, instead of employing one person, we would employ in the construction phase 
400 people and another 400 when it comes to operational. Brother, uh, Madam, Madam Speaker, this is where we are going. We support, Madam Speaker, the expansion of the Veranda Resort. The Veranda Resort, also known as that Honeymoon Beach. Now, there's a certain price we'll have to pay for that. On that particular beach, many Antiguans used to go there. We've turned that into a beach park. We said, no problem. The number of jobs that would be created, the economic activity that would be created in, in, in Antigua and Barbuda. We work in an, and live in a country and in circumstances where we do not have ideal circumstances, Madam Speaker. I recall when I used to go to Dickinson Bay, I used to love to pick seaside grape down at Dickinson Bay. Can't do it now. You have two big hotels down there. What would I tell the families? The 600 on one and the 300 on another that I want to pick seaside grape so you shouldn't work. I can't tell them that. Madam Speaker, there's a price. What we have to understand is that what we do is that if there is a price, you weigh the pros and you weigh the cons. What we have done, Madam Speaker, we have sought with a committee. Madam, I'm fine. Madam Speaker, I'm fine. What we have sought to do, Madam Speaker, when we looked at the problem, we sought a constructive solution to that problem. There's a committee which is headed by Mr. Cartwright Marshall from the Ministry of Tourism, and he's brought together stakeholders. We're going to develop a fantastic Long Bay public park. It's going to cost about $5 million, and we're setting aside that money in our capital budget. We're going to acquire an acre that belongs to the Lafori family so that we can have more access to the beach. There's another two and a half acres that is currently not being used. At the moment, when people go to Long Bay, they have to park up under the Manchineel tree. Cars stretch all the way down. There are no public bathrooms. There are no, there's no proper parking. There are no facilities um, for, the pro for, the, for proper restaurants and so. We are going to develop a public beach park there regardless. Three restaurants, including one fine dining restaurant, all locally owned. We're going to have a children's playground. We're going to make sure that we have facilities so that people can ply their trade there. A modern facility that when people come to Antigua, they can say, this is what a proper beach park is supposed to look like. Not parking upon a mansion hill tree, not squeezing between a mango tree. That is not what we want. Not if you have to relieve yourself, you have to go up in the hill, in the bush. That is not good enough for the 21st century. Antigua and Barbuda, Madam Speaker, we're going to move forward. And there are people in this country. When it's their time, everything is good. There's no problem. And soon as the UPP tries to do anything as a government, they find every means to object and to block it on the principle. And now they say it is on the principle of do for do. On the principle of do for do. Do for do, that's all you I wanted to say, Madam Speaker, also, that the, another project is the Orange Limited. And with this Orange Limited, the ABIA and the government of Antigua and Barbuda, we have approved the development at Perns Point, including a five-star boutique hotel, a freehold managed condominium set, residential lots, a spa, and a health club. Madam Speaker, construction on the first phase of this 253 million US dollar project is scheduled to begin in the first quarter of 2013. We've approved the concessions. It's down at Perns, it's down at Perns Point, and they have already started all the preparatory work. Things are turning around. Things are turning around. And so, Madam Speaker, this is another project. I mentioned a while ago what some people call the Honeymoon Beach Project. That's over at the veranda. And as I said, that is something that we are promoting. We want to see it happening. Well, you had men in the pipeline. What we do, we work to get them out of the pipeline. In fact, Madam Speaker, they used to say they had so many projects. But it was amazing. They said they're bringing sanders. Many years ago, they had it. But they couldn't make it happen. It happened on the UPP.
it happened under this government. The ground, the ground breaking, Madam Speaker. The ground breaking, the ground breaking was in 2002 and 2003. You understand me, Madam Speaker? And it wasn't until 2007 that it started. 2006 that it started. Didn't happen under them. The veranda project. The veranda project. It started on the UPP. The Hermitage Project, it started under this administration. The expansion at Blue Waters was under this administration. The expansion at Galley Bay was under this administration. The expansion at Blue Waters, I think I mentioned. All of those things happened under this administration. These are not issues that we can talk about. Half Moon Bay will happen at the moment, like everything else. The issue with Half Moon Bay is funding. We selected a developer for Half Moon Bay. It was a son of the soil, Mr. Perry. He had a partner with him who developed the, the um, Ritz Carlton in the Cayman Islands. They had money from um, Lehman Brothers. Lehman Brothers is one of the most highly res was one of the most highly respected financial institutions. Lehman Brothers crashed in 2008 or 2009, and since then it has been downhill in terms of availability in the international financial market. There's no reason to hide or make excuses about these things. These are realities. And depending on who in government, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. These are realities. But what we've done, we've negotiated and navigated this very difficult and treacherous path so that the people of Antigua and Barbuda, even though it has been a difficult journey, we have sought to protect at all times the most vulnerable and the poor and ordinary people in this country. That's what we've tried to do. I also want to say, Madam Speaker, that we recently, just last week, witnessed a groundbreaking ceremony at Clarence House. Well, a ribbon cutting at Clarence House. That's $8 million that has come as a result of the very kind um, gesture of one of the persons who has adopted Antigua and Barbuda as his home, Mr. Peter Harrison. And he has, he has decided that he's going to donate this to, re, to, um, to, restore, to, to restore Clarence House. I would just like to say, Madam Speaker, that we owe an enormous debt of gratitude to Ms. Anne-Marie Martin from the National Parks Authority. And I can also say that I was present when the approach was made um, to Mr. Peter Harrison, and we have since developed the opportunity for discussions going forward. And he is demonstrating his confidence in Antigua and Barbuda, and we are grateful to him for the confidence that he has displayed in this country. I also want to say that in another few weeks, I thought I was going to finish, but I mean, these two projects just keep coming and coming. Oh um, in, another, in another few weeks, in, in another few weeks, Madam Speaker, in, in fact, um, I, spoke to, I spoke to the chairman of, of State Insurance Corporation. And again, a way of partnering, using some of our statutory corporations in productive and profitable enterprises. The project with State Insurance Corporation will start within the next month. They're gonna start with um, the preparatory activities. The design has been completed. The project manager has been selected. Today, in fact, they're opening the bids for the people who will be doing the first part of the construction. And they expect that within 12 to 14 months, we're going to have a brand new state-of-the-art treasury building. And we expect that there'll be about 150 jobs on this construction site. It's going to be right at the top of St. Mary Street. And so, Madam Speaker, as you can see, we, 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 if we're in England, we'd say we've seen the green shoots of spring. We'd say that we've turned the corner and we ain't going back, Madam Speaker. We've turned the corner. We're not going back. So in addition to that, 
the Department of Marine Services. Again, they're just completing the design work. They've already selected the project manager. They're going to start construction very soon too.